welcome to Basketball Talk Pro. My name is Ron Ecker. Uh, today I want to talk to you about, as you could tell from the title on the email I sent you, uh, we're going to talk about basketball statistics, but to simplify them because I feel that there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding about the use of uh, statistical data in, uh, in basketball and basketball coaching. Um, actually, it's not very complex at all. And I'm going to show you that uh, today. It's, it's uh, really pretty simple. Uh, but the results of that simplicity can be very, very big uh, in uh, the number of wins and the number of losses that you have. Um, but I think the first thing you have to understand uh, we use the, uh, people use the word statistics <coughs> and analytics. Analytics are very complex. Um, but what we're really doing is measuring our performance. Uh, that, that's all, uh, all we're really doing and all we're really interested in. We don't need a lot of uh, information. We need specific information uh, that we can manage as a coach and our players. Uh, and the simpler that is, the easier it is uh, for us to, uh, to work with it. Peter Drucker, uh, an economist, a legendary uh, in economist who uh, was, a, was known for his skill in uh, developing organizations and consulting on organizations. He summed it up in a very uh, seven word uh, quote. He said, you can't manage what you don't measure. And I agree with that a hundred percent. You, you don't, you think something is good but you don't know if it's good unless you measure it. And we measure it uh, by statistically. But it's very simple uh, type of, uh, of statistical measurement. In fact, you're doing a lot of measuring uh, right now and you may not even think about it. For example, do you, do you uh, test your players at the beginning of the season on a vertical jump? That's a measurement. And it's a measurement that should give you some help in how you deal uh, with your players, uh, how you use them. Uh, it, do you test them from, say, running from free throw line to free throw line uh, with a stopwatch? Uh, or sometimes it's a, a slide step across the free throw line. Those are all measurements. Those are measurements that when you put them all together uh, on an individual, you find out uh, a, a lot about them. Uh, and you, and you, you get away from some of the stereotypes. I had a player once, six foot one, had long arms. His reach actually was as good as a six eight player. Uh, and he added to that, he had a tremendous vertical jump. I don't remember what it was right now. Uh, but we played him at forward. Now, he was a, he was a tough forward because uh, he had all the skills of a guard and looked like a guard. Uh, but he played uh, like a power forward. Uh, and so we had a, a, a weapon there. But we found that out by measuring what he did. We, measured the 40-yard dash, we measured reach, we measured uh, jumping ability, uh, and other things. And we also knew he was very strong. Um, these are the th kind of things that can help you. Uh, and you're doing them probably right now. I don't know if you study them. For example, at, at the end of the game, do they give you a box score? A box score is a measurement. You look down, you see your field goal percentage. You see your rebounds, you see your turnovers. Uh, there, that's all a measurement. And we don't want to make it more difficult than that. But any coach sits down with a box score 
and it tells him a lot about the game, why they won or why they lost. Uh, a half hour, 45 minute uh, really studying that box score gives that coach a lot of information for that one particular game, but for the next games coming up as well. And a buildup of all that information uh, in this computer that you've got right up here uh, that will uh, help you even years from now. All these things being added, uh, added up. So I'd like to take you on just a real little tour uh, of what I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, for example, uh, you're wondering if your team's a good, good offensive team or bad. You may say we're a good offensive team, uh, but we don't know unless you measure. Because what you see a lot of times is selective to what you want to see. It happens all, all, all the time. But here's how simple uh, uh, this is. For example, let's say you have 10 possessions. In other words, you got the ball from a variety of possessions 10 times. And in that 10 possessions, you scored 8 points. Okay, we divide the points by the possession and we get this number, 0.8. In other words, uh, 0.8 points for each possession, uh, the value of those possessions. Um, but you have to know what 0.8 means. Uh, and 0.8, there's a number that I'm going to give you next. This number, very simple, 1. That's your measurement. That tells you whether you're a good offensive team or a poor offensive team. If you did that for the whole game, you're going to lose a lot of games because you need to be at a one or better uh, to be a strong uh, offensive team. Um, and that's a measurement that you should have all the time. You should know how many possessions in your game. And you should know how many points you score, of course you will. And you come up with a number that should be around this number one. If it's below, you get some questions to ask yourself. If it's above, you're probably going to be very happy uh, with the outcome uh, of that game. That's all there is to it. It's called OER, and for the defense, DER, Defensive Efficiency Rating. That's all. That's all there is. Defensive is just the opposite. Uh, you, your opponent's got 10 possessions, scored 8 points, 0.8. That's good. Uh, 0.85 is considered to be a real strong uh, uh, defensive team. But you have to carry this out for maybe 60 or 70 possessions. Uh, it, makes, it makes a lot of difference uh, in, in uh, uh, winning or losing. But I just wanted to show you how simple it is to have a very uh, accurate um, measurement of your, of your team. Uh, both offensively and defensively. Now, you have to be able to get the information. That's the most important part. Now, all of this is explained very well in our course, Measuring Basketball Performance. In fact, it's the very first lesson that we have. O-E-R-D-E-R. -E -E you don't want to forget that because it plays, can play a lot of ways for you. For example, plays. Let's say you got number one play, just to give you a name, but you might be calling the head or elbow or 
uh, whatever you want. Well, uh, somebody should be keeping track of this. If nobody else, you should be doing it from the film after the game. And in that game, uh, you ran number one uh, ten times and scored eight points. I want to keep this very simple, so I'm going to keep with the same numbers. That means that play scored 0.8 points every time uh, you ran it. Now, the, here it changes a little bit. With plays, the number one is still very important. But anything above a 0.8 and above in plays uh, is really very good. Most plays run somewhere in the NBA around 0 0.65, 0 0.68 can be a lot lower than that. Uh, if you read my book, you'll be surprised at how, uh, how low it is. But now you have an evaluation here uh, of, of, of a play. Now let's say you got a number two. And number two, you run ten times, score eleven points. Uh, that's 1.1 points per uh, time you ran it. That is excellent. In fact, I doubt you got any plays that are one, one uh, point or better, and you'd be surprised at that. But it can be big. In my book, I, I have a paragraph of a real-life situation. A NBA team I worked with, I kept every play of every game, 82 games, and somewhere around the mark of 50 games, I pointed out to our head coach uh, that we had nine plays that were above the .8. Uh, the rest of the plays were down at like .62. Um, and I pointed out to him that, and this is uh, in, at the end of the season, uh, had we reversed the order, we only ran the .8 and above plays about 25% of the time. We ran the .62 plays 75% uh, of the time. Had we reversed that and ran the nine best plays 75% uh, uh, of the time, and the others only 25% of the time, we would have been a very high-level team and would have been playing in the playoffs, and we weren't. Uh, it can make a big difference, the, this information that you're uh, getting. You can do that with a fast break. You can do it with out of bounds. You can do it with need plays. You can uh, do it with all, or you can do it with your how your defense plays. Um, but there is one thing: it takes a little more skill in in determining uh, what is a play, what's scored on a play, and what isn't. A lot of plays start and look very nice, but they don't score. And then all of a sudden, the play breaks down and they got to go on their own. Well, uh, you have to be able to clearly and, and consistently uh, make that break. This. That guy scored, but it wasn't on the play. It was on the breakdown, when the play broke down. Uh, and we have a category for that. You will find, uh, if your team is normal at all, that your plays do poorer than when the players go on their own in breakdown or in transition at the end of the fast break. You're going to find... You, don't, you may fast break a lot, but you don't score a lot of points on the fast break. You score more points on what happens at the end if you don't get a shot on your fast break. Usually, and probably 9 out of 10 times, that's where you score most of your points on the fast break. Not the break itself, the period afterwards. Uh, we call it a transition. Well, this is tremendous information. Uh, and it, 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 yet now you know how to coach those guys. Maybe you're not getting enough on, the, on uh, say, uh, five of your plays. Well, 
That doesn't mean you give up on those plays. It just means that hey, we got to find out what's wrong here. Why aren't we getting more mileage out of it? You can't go by how you look in practice when you plays look wonderful when you're in practice and you're playing with no defense. And, and coaches get all worked up and excited about that. This is really a nice play. This is what you need to know. What are they doing in the game? Good or, or, or bad? That's what measuring tells you. Um, and you can take that same thing uh, into uh, player evaluation. This is, becomes a little bit more difficult. It's really a way you can add up all of the uh, positive and negative things a player does for your team. Uh, but you have to scale it down to minutes become important, like possessions were important in the other ones. Uh, it isn't fair if a player is getting six rebounds and he plays 35 minutes and a guy coming off the bench gets six rebounds, but in 25 minutes, who's the better rebounder? The guy that only got six uh, or even five, but he didn't play as many minutes. It's valuable measurements. Uh, and because it's more complex, I'm not going to go in it, but we, in our course, we, go, we have a rating system uh, that uh, we show uh, that coaches can use. And uh, it's been very, very effective, that rating system, in finding your best players. You'll be surprised. You, you, you get in, intrigued with how a player looks or he gets dunks or something, uh, but he's not doing a lot for the team. Doesn't get many steals, turns the ball over, doesn't get many rebounds. All of this is there for you uh, to make decisions. Same thing on one of the keys to shooting percentage in any league you're in is contested and uncontested shots. Uh, if you're contesting 70% of, or better of your opponent's shots, they're not going to shoot a good percentage. Uh, because the difference in a contested and uncontested shot is dramatic. In the NBA, uh, it can be as much as uncontested shots. Uh, they shoot uh, 60 to 63 percent on. Contested shots, uh, they're down in the big, high 30s, 38, 39, maybe 40. Big difference. But most shots are contested. Uh, so the number there is 70 percent. You try to get more than 70% uh, of your shots contested, of your opponent's shots contested. On your end, you try to get more than 30% of your shots uncontested. It spells the difference in the game uh, most of the time. Same thing is true on guarding the ball. Uh, you can use the same measurement. On those measurements, we use 0, 1, and 2. Zero, no contest. One, a contest, but a poor contest, an effort. Two, a good contest. Uh, ironically, uh, there's not much difference between ones and twos in effectiveness. There is a difference, but ones still are very effective in contesting. Well, I was quick. I mean, we went at it pretty fast. Uh, but I, I think it's important that you get interested in this. And if I could interest you in it, uh, you, you need to work on it. There's not many, in fact, I only know of one course that, uh, that uh, is being taught on this subject that I feel has got some sense. Uh, and that's the one we have, Measuring Basketball Performance. Uh, you're welcome to take that course. And when you get done, uh, you're not going to be, you, you know, you're not going to be any genius yet. Uh, but you are going to know how to measure your team. And you are going to be, have a good foundation for taking it even farther 
uh, than that. So take a look at this. Uh, I, I, I've known for years how important it is to winning and losing with your own team, but now uh, it, we're starting to see a real movement towards it. In the NBA, it's get, getting pretty big. Uh, it's, it's drifting down to colleges. It's going to drift down to high schools. Uh, and, you, you know, you, you may be playing against a guy who knows what he's doing a lot. And uh, uh, those guys are going to be hard to beat. And you've you got to keep up. Uh, so take a look at it. Well, that's it for this time. Uh, we'll see you, of course, the next time. Uh, we have a, I have a video. And also remember uh, the coach's course. Uh, the uh, master's way uh, that we're uh, starting to work with the people who have signed up already. That's it. Thank you for listening.